Hey friends, my name is Dylan Bates. I'm so glad you guys are joining us for this week's tutorial. We're gonna be covering some really fun and exciting stuff. This tutorial actually comes from a suggestion in the comments of last week's video. So make sure that you leave a comment in this video if there's something you wanna learn and I will do my best to get to it. So as you know, everybody on the internet is really into transitions and effects and you can buy a vast library of them on like Shopify or something for your Final Cut library. But you can actually make these effects and transitions yourself even though it might take a little bit more time I think in the long run that's totally worth it because each of these transitions and effects is totally unique to you and um, in the end if you really like how it looks you can actually sell these yourself and maybe make a little income on the side as well so after wasting all of your time let's go ahead and get started to create your own custom transitions and effects you're going to need motion 5 now it's $50 in the App Store but it's absolutely worth it once you learn how to use it. So to get started, you'll be greeted by this panel here. This is where you will select if you're making a generator, title, transition, effect, or just a regular motion project. Today we will be covering how to create a Final Cut transition. Go ahead and click the transition button there. And we will now have additional options here on the side. You'll want to set your preset to the highest resolution that your projects will ever be. So it does upscale. So if you were to do 4K and then make an 8K timeline somewhere down the line, it would upscale. However, the resolution would be lower than if you just had made it uh, 8K natively. So we'll go ahead and start with a 4K timeline. We'll then want to set our frame rate to whatever your timeline will typically be. I typically work at a 24 uh, frame per second timeline. So I will set this to 23. 9, 8. Now when you first open this, it's going to set your duration to 10 seconds. So I typically find that my transitions last no longer than 1 to 3 seconds. 3 seconds is definitely on the longer end. But for today, just so we have a little extra time to work with, we'll set it to 3 seconds. So go ahead and just type in 03. After we've done that, we'll just double check all of our settings. Make sure your resolution is at 3840 by 2160. That's because digital cinema is actually a wider aspect ratio so your resolution will change so make sure that's on 4k ultra hd and after i change that it changed all my settings now that we're done with that we can push open boom here is motion 5. now if you've never seen this before it might be a little bit intimidating because everything is quite a bit different than how Final Cut looks, but it's actually quite easy to navigate once you've learned a few of the basics. The first thing I'll take your attention to is the viewer. This is where you'll see your effects happening in real time. Down here is your timeline, and you'll notice that there's transition A and transition B. Your A clip is the clip that starts out the transition. Your B clip is where the transition will end. Over here is a library and it has hundreds of different um, pre-made assets and whatnot that you can later on tweak and make custom to whatever you're hoping to create. So today we'll be working mostly out of the filters browser here. So we'll go ahead and click filters and we are going to be looking for a bad TV effect. This will allow us to create a glitch effect, which is very popular right now. Um, and we can do it relatively easily. So. Once you scroll down through, you can find bad TV right here. Also, if you're having a hard time finding it, there is a search feature down here where you can type in bad TV and it'll pop right up. So go ahead and click and drag that onto transition A. And you'll notice that when we put it on transition A, the bad TV effect goes for the length of transition A. Now, if we extend this out longer, it will not affect transition B. And this is not what we want. So I did it incorrectly so that you would hopefully learn from that. So what we're actually going to do is we will delete that bad TV effect. We will redrag it onto the group. And now this bad TV effect will affect the entire group, making our transition a lot easier. Now that we have the bad TV effect here, we can click on it and go up here to the inspector. The inspector has so many more options than what you typically find in Final Cut Pro. What we're going to do to make our lives as easy as possible, we're going to take the waviness slider and we're just going to crank that up. We'll uh, crank up the roll all the way to 100% and that'll just zero it out actually. Take the static way up. Color, we'll just take 
a lot of this stuff way up so the effect is really apparent. Maybe bring, we'll just not bother with the scan lines. Those are a little intense. Okay, so now that we have those, we can see that the effect is really working between the two clips. Now our next step is to animate the effect. So we don't want it to happen during this entire transitional period, just over the few seconds that the clips are overlapping. So we'll come in to about uh, 25 frames and we are going to add a keyframe under the mix slider. We're gonna drag that mix slider all the way down to 0%. Now, at the very peak of where the transition is supposed to happen, right here in the center, we're going to then add another keyframe and drag that slider all the way up to 100%. Now, if we watch, we can see that the effect comes on real quickly there. After that, we're just gonna come to the other side and go into another 24 frames, and we will add another keyframe and drag that down to zero. And this will just give us a really nice animation. After that, we're going to add another effect to really make this glitch stand out. So what we're going to do is look for the pixelate filter. Now, there are so many filters here, it's going to be a lot easier for me to type it in the search. And there it is, pixelate. Again, we're gonna click and drag it to the group, not to the individual layer so that it affects everything. Now that we have the pixelate filter on there, we can go back to the inspector where we can scale this way up and way down um, and we can animate all these properties. Now the pixelate feature only goes down to one. It doesn't go to an entire zero. So to fix that, we are going to click and drag the pixelate layer over to where we want our transition to happen and now it will be at zero. Now we can animate the scale of the pixelate filter by clicking on the keyframe, going to the center, cranking the scale way up, and then going forward another 24 frames or so, and dragging the scale all the way down. And now we have a beautiful glitch transition effect that we made custom for our own project. Now you'll notice the pixelate filter actually has this circle where you can drag where the pixelation is happening. And it, this works better for like a directional blur or something, but you do have the ability to affect that. So if we want this draggable feature to show up in Final Cut Pro, we can push this really simple button, publish OSC. And when we do that, it will actually enable us to drag the filter around in Final Cut Pro without having to navigate back to motion. So now's the fun part. We get to add it into our project, which is very simple. All we're gonna do is come up here to the top, go to File and do Save. And because we selected the transition feature at the beginning, it will know that we want to put this in Final Cut Pro as a transition. So our template name can be named whatever we like. I will just call this Glitch Transition, and this is what will show up in your effects browser. Next, if you wanna make a lot of Glitch Transitions, you can create an entirely new category. So we'll do Glitches, Get Stitches, boom. And then to further categorize each and every element, if you want this to be like a directional glitch, we could create a new theme and say, this is a directional glitch or whatever makes it easier for you to remember that you have the ability to drag the pixelation around. And now so that we can preview the transition in Final Cut Pro, we will wanna press the save preview movie. Once we're done, all we have to do is push publish. Now this will automatically Put it into Final Cut Pro. You can have Final Cut Pro open and it will automatically be there so you don't have to quit and come back, which is extremely nice for working efficiently. So I'm gonna go over to Final Cut Pro here and I've put together this little simple edit of some stock footage I found of some boxers just fighting it out and we're just gonna add a little energy with this glitch transition. Now you'll notice it just says share succeeded and it always says sharing untitled was successful. I don't actually know how to get it to say another name there, but all the names work great within Final Cut and that's all we need to worry about. So now that we've created the transition, we can come down here to our transitions panel and 
we can find our category here, glitches get stitches, and there it is, our brand new glitch transition. And you can see how it creates that preview video. So we're gonna just click and drag that over onto our timeline. And as you can see, it added this really nice glitch transition that we made custom to this project. The great thing is, is Final Cut Pro will automatically do all the math to figure out how long or short the transition should be. So if you want this to be a really long transition, you can click and drag this way out and it will automatically do the animation and stretch out the time. Or on the contrary, you can also make it super short. So let's say you've made a bunch of transitions that you really love and they have a really unique style to them. Well, you can actually extract those files from the motion folder and you can sell those online. So all we're gonna do is get out of Final Cut Pro here and I'll hide motion and we'll come on down here to the finder and we'll go to movies, motion templates, um, transitions, and we'll just copy and you can paste that on your desktop or wherever you like. You can right click it and compress it so it's really easy for upload. Now all you need to do is take this compressed file and you can upload that to Shopify or whatever website you wanna sell it on and people can actually purchase your transition packs, which might be a nice little side income if your transitions are working out great for you. If somebody purchases your transition or say you wanna give it to a friend, all they need to do is open this compressed file. They can come back here to the same movies, motion templates, transitions, and drag it into the transitions folder and it'll show up there and um, it'll work great for them. So in the coming weeks, I wanna show you how to create custom effects that have more parameters and that have rigs that allow you to adjust settings within Final Cut so you don't have to jump back and forth between motion and Final Cut and it'll really speed up your workflow. It's a ton of fun and I think that you'll really gain a lot of use out of it. Before you click off this video, I just wanted to give everybody a huge thank you for all your support last week. It really meant so much that 40 of you guys jumped on in the first week and um, maybe we can get another 40 this week, I don't know, but I'm so excited about where this channel is going. It's been a dream for so long and I just needed to kick my butt in gear and uh, get started. So I'm so excited that we're doing this. I can't wait to see where we go. So if you are wanting to join me on this journey, please subscribe, please press the like button so other people can see these videos and, uh, and we'll just keep going. Again, thank you so much and I will see you next week.